Hi, my name is Marily, and I'm an artist. Hi, my name is Reza, and I'm a bioinformatician. So for the last few months, you and I have been getting together and meeting and having conversations about art and science. We're both very interested in evolution and biodiversity, and I think this collaboration would uh, help us find the similarities between art and science. I would say some of my biggest influences have been people that sort of find that nexus between art and science, like um, Ernst Haeckel, the German uh, scientist and illustrator. E.O. Wilson, who's an evolutionary biologist from Alabama, said that in the beginning of creation of both art and science, everything in the mind is a story. And I think that's a really good jumping off place for this conversation. Yeah, I think that's right, because art and science, they both start from imagining and thinking. So in the beginning, they, of course, start from the mind. I think there's a lot of science in art, and that's evident. Uh, you know, you can see, you know, mathematics and geometry all over architecture as an art form. And yeah, they share a lot, I think. Definitely art and science have been cross-pollinating and sort of influencing each other for a long, long time and especially now. And, you know, just like early life forms evolved by having permeable boundaries and kind of sharing genes back and forth, I feel like art and science share ideas. So there's a visual poetry to a scientific language or to a mathematical language in a way they talk about beautiful symmetry in physics and, you know, the beauty, say, of the plots that you create in your job. You know, there's an aesthetic quality that is a deeply visual quality, and that's something that we share as a species, and it's something that art and science both take advantage of. I think art and science both started at the same time. I mean, because, you know, art could have started like two million years ago when we started making stone tools. That could be the first sculptures that we made, or you can call it the first, uh, I mean, scientific tool that, that helped us survive as a species. One can also argue that, uh, you know, dancing and singing are also art forms. Birds, for example, they also dance and tweet and sing. And you can argue that that's um, an art form or, you know, it could also be a scientific tool, a technology that they had, a knowledge that got fixed in their genes that helped them survive uh, as a species. Yeah, that that's also proves the point that art and science could have a shared beginning. Another example would be birds' nests. Some of them are really complex and sophisticated architecturally or spider webs, you know, they are geometrically beautiful and it's also their tool of <laughs> for their survival, for, you know, hunting. And that's also another proof of art and science, really like uh, how blurry it, it gets and how hard it is to draw a line between them. So, you know, other species that are maybe not necessarily human may have culture, you know, that may be an they have aesthetics, a sense of aesthetics, without necessarily having quote-unquote art or science. And that's something that we can't claim is, you know, uniquely human anymore, we, you know, which goes back to evolution. So we, at one point we were joined with trees. We were related to trees and these birds that dance and these birds that make nests and the birds that sing, like that is also part of our common story if we go back far enough. You know, talking about a sense of wonder, Ray's and I have a, a shared love of cave art. You know, I see uh, those images sort of resonating down through the millennia and sending messages to us, but we're creating the meaning for those messages. And I think that's another important part of being human is that we create our own meaning. And that's kind of art and science kind of play into that where they reflect our cultural values. Like what we value is shown to us in the science that we create and in the art that we create. That's uniquely human. As an artist, I'm really inspired by this natural world and by scientific innovation, biodiversity, and it seems like those stories, the story of our natural world, the story of our origins, those stories are the stories that artists tell. So I think that's another reason that art and science share this. We're both trying to tell something about ourselves, really. We're trying to tell ourselves these stories. And, you know, we've talked a lot about scientific discovery and the fact that we can edit and hack the gene code right now and create artificial life. 
And all this is happening at the same time where we're losing biodiversity and we're losing habitat and we're creating havoc with climate. And those two things happening at the same time is very, it's a very strange time to live in. And that's something that comes up again and again. Well, yeah, I think that fear is natural. And, uh, and we need sometimes to be feared about even science and the future and the technology that is advancing right now exponentially. And we don't know where it's taking us. The reason I'm saying that fear is natural is that because when we came down to trees in Africa, uh, we needed to be fearful. So fear and anxiety are necessary things. And they, they, they make us ready to criticize, and to, to be immune of the outcome of some of the scientific discoveries. But on the other hand, there is some anti-science movements and anti-intellectual movements that could come out of these fear and anxieties and because people are not ready for a change, specifically a very, very rapid change that is happening right now. But I just want to say that this fear, even though it is very good sometimes and uh, could be used as a tool of criticizing, but science is really advancing in all directions. It's not just physics and mathematics and genetics advancing. We have science of human rights right now, and uh, there is environmental sciences, and there is uh, science of animal rights that never existed before. So I think this fear, even though it's good, but we should be prepared, and there should not be a anti-science movement, and anti-intellectual movement. I think uh, evolution would find its way, and we would just advance more and more, and we should be ready for it.